It's enough to drive you crazy. What is? Those honeymooners. I didn't hear a thing. Yeah, but you're not next door to them. They were going at it all night. There's got to be a limit, doesn't there? Well, Chris reckons they're moving out today. Well, the sooner me and the guys find somewhere else to live, the better. EJ seems happy there. Yeah, he's happy because it's cheap. <laughs> Don't worry, I'm working on him. Vico said about Thomas 208. And Thomas 208 receiving. Have a report of a burglary in progress at Wicks Electrical, 23 Pennoe Road. Can you attend? Affirmative, VKC. We're ten minutes away. Thomas 208 to VKC. We'll have an ETA right now. your mouth, girl. Oh, don't tell me what to do. Shut up, Sam. They're bloody cutting my wrist. If you want the handcuffs off, you're going to have to calm down. That's better, Constable. Steward, show Miss Baxter through the interview room, please. Come on. I know the way. We could put the cuffs back on if you'd prefer. Well, let's give her a few minutes to calm down, shall we? Never seen her like this before. I thought you said she was in Melbourne doing well. She was last I heard, had a job and everything. Well, she's back in town now after her old tricks. How's the uh, store owner? Mr. Wicks. Oh, the Ambos reckon it'll be fine. Is it the hospital getting stitched? Has he got any idea who was sold him? He doesn't have any idea about anything at the moment. Mrs. Baxter. Thanks for coming in. I thought she'd turn the corner with that job. She loved it so much. She even rang me to tell me about it. But they had to lay her off. Well, not because she didn't do a good job, but because I downsized. And that set her off again? Oh, no. She, she came back here really wanting to keep her act together. She even agreed to talk to someone. A psychiatrist. Well, that's a positive step. And it all started again. The yelling, staying out all night. What caused the change in her? I put it down to that new boyfriend. Scum of the earth. What was his name? Harley Ball. Yeah, I know, Sam. What about it? Well, her mother says you spend nearly all your time together and she slept at your flat last night. Yeah, but she was gone before I woke up. Mr Ball, a van was stolen this morning from outside a house, not far from where you live. So? That van was at the scene of a vicious assault and burglary. <laughs> Thanks for catching me up on the news. Nothing to do with you? No. Sam Baxter was apprehended at the scene. Oh, no. She's a naughty girl. Where were you at 8.30 this morning? The same place I was when you picked me up. At home, on my own. Well, we'd like to take your fingerprints to eliminate you from the scene of the burglary. Uh, you said this wasn't a formal interview. It's just a chat at this stage. Yeah, yeah. Then permission denied. What do you know about this? It's ice. So you're on speed, huh? No, I don't touch this stuff. So what was it doing in your living room table? I don't know. Don't bother telling us it belongs to someone else. Well, that's exactly what I am telling you. And who would that be? That would be Sam. What is it? It's called ice, Mrs Baxter. It's a type of speed. Oh, what are you doing to yourself? Nothing you haven't done to me already. Ice is addictive. It can affect your moods, your behaviour. It can cause a stroke, give you suicidal fantasies. I was afraid of this. She's got an addictive personality, like a father. Does she have to be here? Yes, but we'd like to do the talking, Mrs Baxter. Is it yours? No. Well, Harley says it is. Oh, you're lying. He wouldn't say anything to you about me. Oh, he did. Oh, crap. If it's not yours, whose is it? Harley's? No. He doesn't deserve your loyalty, Sam. Was he with you at the scene of the burglary this morning? No. Come on, you didn't hit that man. 
It was Harley, wasn't it? I've got nothing else to say to you. Samantha Baxter, you will be charged with robbery, burglary... Oh, God. ...assault with a weapon, recklessly causing injury, theft of a motor vehicle, unlicensed driving, and possess of a drug of dependence. Sign here, please. For what now? Sam will have to appear at the children's court on the 17th of next month. And then what? Will they send her to a detention centre? We can't rule it out. No. You're happy now. Did you have to give her a hamburger with a lot? Joe, she fled the scene. She was driving the stolen car and she resisted arrest. Yeah, and this Harley character gets off scot free. We don't even know if he was there. Of course he was there. How's Mr. Wicks? Not bad, considering. What did he have to say for himself? Well, he arrived for work early, heard someone in the back of the store, reported the burg. He was on his way outside again when he got hit. Could he identify his attacker? No, it all happened too quickly. There was someone hiding behind the shelf and all he saw was the shape coming towards him. Well, that doesn't sound like something Sam would do. I mean, even if she was attempting to rob the store, I mean, this is virtually an unprovoked assault. She wouldn't do that. Joe, ice can bring on violent behaviour. And if she was involved in the robbery, then she's guilty of the assault. If she hit the guy, the magistrate's more likely to be lenient. We can't call this case closed until we've got everybody involved. All right, let's see if we can't place Harley Bull or anyone else at the scene. We've got a peeping Tom at the Baroni Street Rehabilitation Unit. Well, we've got to check out the crime scene. Well, PJ can do that himself. This sounds urgent, Joe. Evan, you too. Do you know who this is? His name's Justin. He lives here in the Looney Bin. We had an invasion of these goons a couple of weeks ago, and now this. It's called the Psychological Rehabilitation Unit, sir. Justin, I'm here. And who are you, sir? I'm Justin's psychiatrist, Dr. Clark. You told us we'd be safe in our homes, that having them in our street wouldn't be a problem. Please, Mr. King. Justin, you can come down now. No! It's them! Come down so I can knock your block off! No, I can't! They're everywhere! If you just give us some space, I'll get him down. I'm not going anywhere. Look, uh, Mr King, is it? Duncan King, I live next door. I reported all this. Well, why don't you go home and let us sort it out? Yeah, come on, Dad. I'll make you a cup of tea. We'll be over in a minute to take a statement. All right, Justin. He's gone. The coast is clear. That was quick. But well, we thought we'd talk to you and your dad first. Dad needs to rest. Oh, well, we'll talk to you then. So has Justin been a problem before? It's been one problem after another since they moved in. But was he spying on you? Uh, if my dad says that he was, then he was. Can you back him up? Yes. He was spying on me. You feel he's a threat? Uh, they all are. Can't you just make them all move away? He's schizophrenic. He's no peeping Tom, I can assure you. He seemed out of control this morning. Thanks to Duncan King, he's gone out of his way to be abusive towards Justin. As stress exacerbates the psychotic symptoms. So his medication usually does the trick? Uh, of course. Like I said, he wouldn't be here if his condition wasn't treatable. Justin, this is Constable Parrish and Constable Jones. Joe and Jonesy. Sorry to cause trouble. What were you doing up on the roof this morning? Keeping watch, in case they came. Who were they? Go on. There's this voice in my head. I try not to listen, but sometimes... What does this voice tell you? It keeps changing. But lately it's saying that they're coming to take me back back to the psych ward at St David's. So you weren't spying on Tammy? Who? Uh, the girl next door. No. I'll adjust his medication. If Mr King would just back off, there shouldn't be any more problems. And it might be a good idea to stay away from next door, eh? 
That's all I ever try to do. What's it going to take to get rid of them? An axe in the back of her head or something? Dad, settle down. I can look after myself. You can see what they're doing to us. Maybe if you keep out of their way, things will stop. Oh, here we go. So we're the bad guys. You have no idea what those types get up to. But like what? Weeping and wailing till all hours. People are costed in the street. Is that true, Tammy? Yes. Well, we're going to need specific details. <laughs> and in the meantime, you do nothing. How would you like to be raising a teenage daughter next to that? If you suspect trouble, call us. That's what I did this morning. And what happened? You take his side because he's a loony. We're treating this like any other case, sir. If you ask me, he's the one who needs treatment. Did you uh, settle things down in Baronia Street? Storm in a teacup. Yes, well, just remember to take it carefully. There was an awful lot of ill will over that rehab centre. What's that? Used to gain access through the side window. Any prints on it? I'll have to check for that, but... Uh, but Sam Baxter's mother owns a milk bar, doesn't she? Mrs Baxter confirms that she's missing a stepladder. Well, Harley could have taken it. He could have. Joe, it all indicates that she was an active participant, if not the instigator. She's protecting Harley. He doesn't deserve it, but it's just not in her character to dog. Sorry, Paige. Joe, your boyfriend's here. Mr King. You wanted something specific about the nut house next door? I've got it. I'm all ears. There's a new girl there. She offered me her services as a prostitute. You realise, of course, there are laws in relation to soliciting women? There you go again. Turning it back on me. She did all the soliciting. You expect us to believe this just happened without you making any sort of approach? I went next door as nice as pie to ask them to turn the music down and she made obscene suggestions. That's a very serious allegation, sir. Constable Parrish will give it her immediate attention. I know you've got a job to do, but come on. Please, he said she was new. All right, if you must, a girl joined us a couple of hours ago. She's over there with Justin. Sam Baxter. What's she doing here? She's been my patient for three months. I've brought her in for a few days to assess her. <laughs> well, she doesn't belong here. She's exhibiting erratic mood swings, violent outbursts and paranoia. She's not crazy. She's not. I'm getting her out of here. I offered him sex. I'm supposed to be nuts, not totally desperate. You're not nuts. So you deny the allegation then? Yes, I deny it. Well, how was I supposed to know he'd take me seriously? What did you say to him, Sam? He told me to turn the music down. I told him to bugger off, but he wouldn't. So I said if he was hanging around for a route, he can't afford me. Why would you say something like that? Because I thought it would make him go away, and it worked. He did. As if we don't have enough problems with Duncan King. If I don't start behaving, you might have to send me home. You won't be going home, Sam. The psych unit at St David's General, perhaps. Could I have a word, please? Don't see you, right? You're threatening Sam with hospitalisation if she doesn't behave. It's not a threat, it's a consequence. I thought that sort of thing only happened in Russia. Constable Parrish, there are no locked doors here. Patients are admitted on strict conditions, one of which is that they obey the rules. Sam Baxter is not mentally ill. And where did you study psychiatry? Okay. Her recent behaviour might be explained by the drugs she's been taking. The drugs may have caused the symptoms or triggered an illness that's been latent for years. Either way, she'll need treatment. Look, Sam is lucky to be here instead of a psych unit. I had to bend the rules to do it. She doesn't belong in any psychiatric institution. Where then? You'd rather see her in a detention centre? Of course not. Because that's where she'll end up if she goes through your system. If she is ill, imagine what being imprisoned will do to her. Oh, sounds very convenient to me. Why? Well, it's a great way of avoiding detention, isn't it? Hey, what about some service here? Keep your shirt on. She doesn't want to be there. That's why she's arcing up, so she can get out. Or well, maybe it's something her shrink and her mum cooked up. On the other hand, if she's a head case, that could explain her violent behaviour. She's not violent. <laughs> Look at our sad police force. They don't protect anyone. Not unless you're a loony. Go away, Mr King. And they give extra special treatment to prostitute loonies. Can we pay for our dinner? Oh, sure, I'll just get the bill. There are laws in relation to making false allegations, you know. It's going on right next door to me, and they don't give us stuff. Uh, that's enough. 
I think you better leave, mate. That's twenty-eight fifty. Thanks. That's fine. I'm ah. sorry. Dad, for God's sake. Poor girl having to put up with a father like that. Mm. Hey, beautiful. Can I buy you a drink? <laughs> Any dreams, pal? Bloody tart. Now, Joe, could have been your lucky day. Is that what you call it? No. They're still here. Oh. The honeymooners. I thought they checked out. Decided to stay for another night or two. Oh, you've got to be kidding me. Open up. Jerry, look, not tonight. You're not going to get out of it that easily. Go on, we've got to call that. We? Well, you're the one on call. Yeah, well, it's a rehab unit. This time it sounds serious. Over here. I've called an ambulance. It, it doesn't look good. There's a creep who came on to me at the pub. Yeah. Do you know him? No. But I saw who did it. That mental case from next door. I warned you. No, no, no! It's your fault. You made me do it. It's all because of you. Justin, stop it. It's no big deal. What? Is it a crime to break a sugar bowl these days? Someone was just assaulted out the front. Yeah, I heard the ambulance. I was hoping King had had a heart attack. Do you know anything about the assault? Nope. So go ask someone else. Justin, how about you? He doesn't know anything either. We were together the whole night. Let him speak for himself, please, Sam. Forget it. He's off the air. Why? Over this. Thanks for calling me. Have you talked to him? Oh, no, no, no! He won't be able to help you tonight. No, no, no! I need to talk to him first thing in the morning. Sure. Justin? Come on. Come on. Mr. King has accused Justin of the assault. I can understand you wanting to defend your boyfriend, Sam, but you've only known Justin for five minutes. You don't understand anything about me. I think I do. I want to help you, Sam. Help! All you do is screw up people's lives. Why can't you just rack off and leave me alone? Are you sure we're not just looking at a case of mistaken identity? But King insists he saw the whole thing, says Justin. Assaulted Kevin Maxfield, then ran back into the house. What was the weapon? Don't know. Well, what's Maxfield's condition? Well, he's still unconscious, no serious damage. We should talk to Sam again. Why, you think she's involved with the assault? No, she just gave Justin an alibi. <laughs> you have to wonder why. Don't start an alibi with him, Pat. Justin blames her and she was uptight. She's just been labelled mentally ill. Wouldn't you be uptight? Okay, we'll see All you I know is she's in there for two minutes and there's trouble. That was Dr Clark. He's bringing Justin in. I didn't bash anyone. I didn't even follow him outside. We didn't say anything about you following him outside. Well, I didn't. You're trying to confuse me. We're just trying to find out what happened. Justin, the, the man that was assaulted, Kevin Maxfield, he, he was at the house? What do I say now? The truth, Justin. What happened? I came out of my bedroom and... And he was, he was in the living room with her. Her? Well, Sam, she should never have let him in. So what were they doing? He was giving her some money. Then he was grabbing her. But I kicked him out. But she didn't take the money, she didn't let him on. Or did she? Well, it looked like it to me. I just grabbed him and pushed him out. Did you hit him? No. Then how did the sugar bowl get broken then? I'll throw it. At Kevin Maxfield. At Sam? 
She makes me so angry. She's my friend, not his. Well, until we can get a statement from the victim, it's his word against King's. But Sam said they were together. I think we can safely dismiss that. You said he wasn't the violent type. I didn't think so, but this business of throwing things at Sam... What do you think brought that on? I'm not sure. All I know is he's taken a real shine to her. I encouraged it, I'm afraid. What? Good therapy? I thought so. But she really seems to have stirred him up. Well, Sam tends to have that effect. Justin's the one that'll have to go. I've already made arrangements to admit him to the psych unit. Well, shouldn't you hold off until we find out for sure what happened last night? I can't jeopardise the entire program for one patient. There was no guy in the house. Why would Justin say there was? He just wanted to get me into trouble. Why? I mean, he's the one up for an assault. Yeah, well, he shouldn't be. I told you we were together all night till you showed up. Not doing what? <sighs> Having sex. I was charging him ten bucks a minute. Sam? That's what you all think of me. That's not true and you know it. Just give us a straight answer, please. I already told you. I never even saw this Kevin guy. Well, I reckon he was in the house. And the only reason you would lie about it is because you assaulted him. Just like you assaulted Mr Wicks. Or are you protecting Justin? <sighs> you figure it out. Just stop it. Justin's already going back to the psych ward. It can't get any worse for him. But it can for you, OK? So would you just, for once, tell it like it is? I have. Anyway, it's no skin off my nose what happens to Justin. I was walking home, minding my own business, and I get bopped over the head. Well, you live in Hartley Street, don't you? Yeah. So what were you doing in Baronia Street? It's hardly a direct route between the pub and your place. Had a bit too much to drink. Must have wandered off the beaten track. Well, you didn't seem too drunk when I saw you at the Imperial. I stayed on. We've been told that you entered 195 Baronia Street and tried to engage in a transaction with a young woman. And that you were evicted by another resident of the house. I'm a happily married man. Well, you made advances to me. You took me the wrong way. Why go out for milk when you've got a cow at home? I put it to you that you overheard a conversation about certain activities at the rehab unit and you thought you'd try your luck. Hey, they attacked me for no reason at all. Sounds like you know more than you're letting on. There was two of them. A bloke with spiky hair and a blonde girl. And it was a completely unprovoked attack? Yep. No motive at all? They stole my wallet. Is that a motive? We've only got Kevin Maxfield's word for it. Sam was even involved. I mean, Duncan no, King didn't mention right. Sam, did he? Well, she might have seen him first and bolted. It was Dr Clark. Sam's nicked off in his car. You stupid kid. It gets worse. She's taken Justin and he hasn't got his medication with him. They'd head for Melbourne, surely. Well, there's no, more places to hide. Well, wherever they're headed, they're going to have to stop soon for petrol. The tank was close to empty. Do they have any cash on them? Well, Dr Clark couldn't be sure, but he doubts it very much. All right, check all the servos on the Melbourne road. Sam hasn't contacted her mother. Did you have any idea where Sam might go? No. That's helpful. Why does Sam have to be the mastermind? You don't think poor old Justin's doing this, up? Well, we could be looking at abduction. What reason did she have for taking off like that? You don't think robbery, burglary or serious assault would do the trick? She could be in real danger. We know Justin's without his medication and he's already highly unstable. Joe, put out a general broadcast. They will turn out. Hey, I've got something. Thanks again. We got a sighting at a truck stop on the Melbourne Road. A guy fitting Justin's description used Kevin Maxfield's credit card to buy a tank of petrol. But what did they say about the girl? The attendant didn't see anyone else, but she did say that Justin was acting pretty weird. In what way? Aggro, uptight. She was scared of him. Oh, great. Joe, Sam can look after herself. Yeah, we don't know that. We don't know what he's capable of. Who is this? Are you all right? Yep. Uh, OK, what's happening? I'll just grab it for you. Joe, it's Sam. It doesn't sound good. Sam. OK, OK, just, just calm down. Listen to me. Where are you? I can't help you, Sam, if you don't let me know where you are. OK? Yeah. All right, all right, we'll just get out of there and go... What's happened? I just heard Justin yelling and the phone went dead. Well, where is she? Uh, highway Motel. All right, okay. get on to uh, the crisis assessment team. We have to go in. Now, we should wait for Dr Clark and the crisis assessment team. Why can't just stand here? 
Sarge, what if he kills her? Do you have that on your hands? Look, I should go in here. It's my best. No, 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 no! I just... Go away! It's OK. You can't be here! Sorry, well, we just want to help you, OK? Yeah, why don't you let Sam leave so we can have a bit of a talk? You're not going to take her away from me! I told you to get used to it. I won't let them hurt you. We don't want to hurt Sam, Justin, OK? All right, now just let her go. No, 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 no! You're one of them. I recognise you now. I'm a friend of Sam's and I can be your friend too. No, no, no! no. All right. Go away! You can't be here! It's OK, mate. It's You're okay. not going to touch her. It's OK. One of them came into our house. His hands are all over her. I won't let that happen again. <laughs> You're my friend. I've got nobody okay. else. Sam didn't do anything with that guy, OK? Look, he tried and she told him to get lost. No! No! I believe her, OK? Sam doesn't lie to her friends. And if you want to be Sam's friend, you need to believe her too. I do want to be her friend. OK, then just let her go. <laughs> OK. Right. I don't know what's happening to me. We just want to help you, Justin. Your doctor's coming here. He's going to be here in a minute. Dr Clark. Yeah. Now, what do you think about going outside with PJ and you can meet him out there? Okay. You all right? He just went crazy. It's all right now. I'm glad you called me, Sam. Joe. <laughs> Giving Justin marijuana was the worst thing he could do. He's on medication. It makes his system go haywire. I didn't know. Did you give it to him last night? Well, that explains his aggression then, too. Well, now they know what caused it. He won't have to go to the psych ward, will he? Well, that depends. Is that why you ran away, to protect him from that? And you wanted to get away from Kevin Maxfield before he put you in it, right? What? Well, he says you and Justin both attacked him. That is totally not true. Well, then how did you get his wallet? Look, Sam, you called me today because you wanted my help. And I want to keep helping you, but you've got to stop pulling in the opposite direction. That guy did come into the house. Kevin Maxfield. Yeah. He started flashing money. I told him to get lost, but he grabbed me. He stank of B.O. Justin got him off me. Did Justin follow him out of the house? I don't know. I went to the dunny to throw up, but Justin was there when I got back. And? He thought I was into that sleazy guy. He started going off at me threw things and said I was a rotten friend. Did he have Kevin's wallet with him? No, it had fallen to the floor. And you kept it? Well, what did you expect me to do? Run after him and say, excuse me, sir, you dropped something? Do you think Justin did the assault? Sam, help yourself. All I can tell you is that I had nothing to do with it and I don't know if Justin did. I had enough for one day. Take her back to the rehab unit and we'll talk again tomorrow. I can't take her back. I'm sorry, Sam, but you've broken too many rules today. You can't just drop her. She needs somewhere to stay. I was wrong about Sam. She's not suited to the environment. Dr Clark, if you don't take her on, we'll have to remand her in custody. My hands are tied. I'm sorry, Sam. <clears throat> you 
You've um, committed serious offences while on bail. We'll be recommending to the bail justice that you be remanded in custody in St David's. Sam settled in all right? What do you reckon? She's in jail. She's in Zambu the whole way there. I'm trying to work out what's going on in that kid's head. It's just impossible. Joe, you should stop trying. You won't get anything back for your trouble. Who says I want anything? I just don't think she deserves the life she's been dealt. Well, maybe the one thing Sam needs to learn is that you don't always get what you want. Especially if you haven't earned it. We're talking about fulfilling basic needs. Love. Trust. Knowing you can count on someone. I mean, no one should have to earn that. Well, there's not a lot we can do about that. Or well, we could prove she didn't do either of the assaults. And if she did? Kevin Maxfield is a sleaze and a lie. You can't believe anything he says. All right, and what about the first assault, Mr Wicks? And the Berg and the drug charges and the stealing yeah, of the car. One thing at a time, PJ. Gosh, you're impatient. <laughs> We should get some sleep. We've got a lot of work to do tomorrow. We? I told you. It was both of them. The bloke and the girl. But who actually hit you? Both of them. Two against one. I didn't stand a chance. Where else were you hit? Just you. Two people of different heights assault you. And you managed to get hit in exactly the same spot. Look, I'm still not 100%. I shouldn't even be here. Mr Maxfield, you've been assaulted at the moment. You're the victim. But if we find you've made false allegations, you will be charged. You went to the rehab unit and you offered a female resident money for sex, didn't you? Of course, if you prefer, we speak directly to your wife. No, don't. I suppose I went there. Was the young woman involved in the assault or wasn't she? Neither of them were. So who assaulted you? No idea. All I can remember was this bright light coming towards me, and bang. You were carrying a heavy torch when we arrived at the scene. <laughs> this is so typical. They can't be to blame, can they? Is there anything you want to tell us? Like what? What were you doing at the time of the assault? Watching Tally with your daughter. You leave her out of this. I hope she can give you an alibi. The, the, the value of my place has dropped. I can't get a week of sleep worrying about what they're going to do next. So don't you dare sit there and accuse me. Just, 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 just settle down. Just settle down. Please, he doesn't need this. He lost his business and then Mum left. And I don't think he can handle much more. If he hasn't done anything wrong, there's no problem. But he has done something wrong, hasn't he? No, he's a great man. If you knew him when things were good, you'd know that. Once things get back to the way they were... Well, they can't anymore, not until you speak up. Leave him alone! very protective of your dad, aren't you, Tammy? Since Mum left, someone's got to look after him. But what you're doing, covering for him, making excuses... It's not doing him any good. He needs help. I know. Well, if you keep shielding him, he'll never get it. But I can't turn him in. He's my father. I love him. Maybe he needs you to love him a bit less and help him a bit more. You bastard. Sit down. She wouldn't dump me in it. She wouldn't. Sit down. Your daughter said she followed you outside and she saw you hit Mr Maxfield with the torch. She told us because she needs you to be her father again, take responsibility. She's frightened of you, Mr King. Now you think you've got a lot to deal with, what about her? We will find the evidence against you. We will search your house, we will find the torch, there'll be DNA. I, I didn't know she was there. I wouldn't have done it in front of my Tammy. What happened? I didn't plan it. There was a ruckus next door. I, I grabbed my torch 
and I saw through the window that guy from the pub boring the girl. The other guy turfed him out the door. And you knocked him unconscious and you tried to blame Justin. <laughs> it was dark. I didn't think he really seen me. I just wanted the place to go away. You can't predict what those people are going to do next. I was thinking of my Tammy. So, the rehab unit isn't the source of your problem. You are. I'm gonna go to jail, aren't I? We've charged someone with Kevin Maxfield's assault. Not Justin? No, somebody else. So Justin will be able to go back to the rehab unit. Good. Now let's talk about you. That's a short conversation. I'm behind bars. Well, the bars are up here, Sam. Remember how this whole thing got started? You took the rap for an assault you didn't do. Well, Rose says I didn't. Yeah, I do. If we can prove it, maybe, just maybe, you'll get off with a suspended sentence. But I can't prove it if you work against me. Don't wear what's not yours, Sam. Life's too short. Harley said the van was a mate's. A stolen one? Yeah, we drove to the electrical shop. He told me to wait and he went in. Did you know he's going to rob the joint? By that stage I did, yeah. Not before. He used your mum's ladder to get in. <sighs> I didn't even know he had it until we got there. So you saw us turn up and decided you need to get out of there? Yeah. And Harley got out the back? Through the window, yeah. <laughs> Left me for dead. You were never in the store? What about the ice? Harley's. I... I took it a few times, but I stopped about a week ago. Well, this is all sounding pretty good for court. Nobody's going to believe me. They never do. Well, I do. Leave it to me. Answer the question, did you assault Mr Wicks? No, it was Sam, all right? So you're confident we're not going to find your fingerprints all over the shop? You don't have my fingerprints. Yes, but we, uh, we have Sam's statement and this is an official interview. So we can take your prints whether you like it or not. Or you could just tell the truth. So he's admitted to everything. The stolen van, the burglary, the assault, the lot. Aren't you going to say I told you so? I haven't got time for games, PJ. I'm going to Sam's bail application hearing. Where's Mrs. Baxter? The magistrate's not going to give her bail if her mother doesn't bother turning up for the Joe. Oh, uh, Mrs. Baxter. I've, uh, I've spoken to Dr. Clark and he agrees that uh, Sam's time on ice and her subsequent withdrawal symptoms were partly responsible for her uh, psychotic episode. He's also said that Sam's mental problems weren't because of the drugs. He said they'd go deeper than that. Well, he said they might not be because of the drugs. No. I mean, no one's saying Sam doesn't have problems, least of all Sam herself, right? Yeah. And now that she's admitted that, she can move on. Oh, look, she's moved on before. Like when she got back from Melbourne. Didn't take her much to move backwards again. Well, this time it'll be different. No, it won't. Mrs Baxter, it's very important that you're supportive of Sam in court today. I'm not going to court. Hang on a minute. I'm sorry, but I can't have you at home. Mrs Baxter, if, if Sam doesn't have a home to go to, the, the magistrate will have no choice but to remand her in custody. You think this is easy for me? Well, it's not. But I can't cope with you anymore. I can't go through it. Mrs Baxter, she's your daughter. I can't believe that woman. I'm going back, aren't I? Oh, Sam, I'm so sorry. Do 
would be all right. She's a tough kid. No, she's not. That's where everyone's wrong about it. Hey, how's the house? Oh, it needs a few repairs, but nothing serious. Major renovations. You're too fussy. That's a problem. Hey, if we're going to move out, I want it to be worthwhile. So it's back to the pub for more sleepless nights. Great. Mm -hmm. I'm off. Good mate. How are you? Okay. No, no, no. She's coming? right here. Oh, uh, is yeah. it? Joe, it's your dad. Okay. I'll catch you up. All right. All right. Hey, Dad. How are you? Oh, uh, could be better. No, no, we're still house hunting. What? Who? Oh, you've got to be kidding. Check out your new home. How did you get it? This place. They're friends of Mum and Dad's, the Fiorellis. They've gone overseas and they need someone to house it. For how long? About four months. By that time, PJ's place should be ready. <sighs> I've never lived somewhere like this before. I can't believe it. Well, you're going to have to work for it, you know? I haven't got a job. Not that sort of work. I want you to go back to school. Oh. Come on, you've got to make an effort and stay out of trouble. I will, Joe. Yeah? I don't lie to my friends. Why don't you go and choose yourself a room? <laughs> That'll be the boys. Have you told them I'm living here yet? Not yet, but they'll be fine with it. Even Detective Hashem? Yes, even Detective Hashem. You're going to choose the best room before they do. <laughs> you have got to be kidding me. No, it's all ours. Did I tell you it's rent free? Three bedrooms? Four bedrooms, actually. Hey, we've got a spare. <laughs> It's enough to drive you crazy. What is? Those honeymooners. I didn't hear a thing. Yeah, but you're not next door to them. They were going at it all night. There's got to be a limit, doesn't there? Well, Chris reckons they're moving out today. Well, the sooner me and the guys find somewhere else to live, the better. EJ seems happy there. Yeah, he's happy because it's cheap. But don't worry, I'm working on him. We go sit about Thomas 208. And Thomas 208 receiving. Have a report of a burglary in progress at Wicks Electrical, 23 Pinot Road. Can you attend? Affirmative VKC, we're two minutes away. Hit me. Is this still inside? I'll take it. Mount Thomas 208 to VKC. We'll have an ETA. Right your mouth, girl. Oh, don't tell me what to do. Oh, shut up, Sam. They're bloody cutting my wrist. If you want the handcuffs off, you're going to have to calm down. That's better, Constable. Steward, show Miss Baxter through the interview room, please. Come on. I know the way. We could put the cuffs back on if you prefer. Right, let's give her a few minutes to calm down, shall we? Never seen her like this before. I thought you said she was in Melbourne doing well. She was last I heard, had a job and everything. Well, she's back in town now after old tricks. How's the uh, store owner? Mr. Wicks. Oh, the Ambos reckon he'll be fine. Is it the hospital getting stitched? 
Has he got any idea who was solving it? He doesn't have any idea about anything at the moment. Mrs. Baxter. Thanks for coming in. I thought she'd turn the corner with that job. She loved it so much. She even rang me to tell me about it. But they had to lay her off. Well, not because she didn't do a good job, but because I downsized. And set her off again? Oh, no. She, she came back here really wanting to keep her act together. She even agreed to talk to someone. A psychiatrist. Well, that's a positive step. And it all started again. Yelling, staying out all night. What caused the change in her? I put it down to that new boyfriend. Scum of the earth. But what's his name? Harley Ball. Yeah, I know, Sam. What about it? Well, her mother says you spend nearly all your time together and she slept at your flat last night. Yeah, but she was gone before I woke up. Mr Ball, a van was stolen this morning from outside a house, not far from where you live. So? That van was at the scene of a vicious assault and burglary. <laughs> Thanks for catching me up on the news. Nothing to do with you? No. Sam Baxter was apprehended at the scene. Oh, no. She's a naughty girl. Where were you at 8.30 this morning? <sighs> the same place I was when you picked me up. At home, on my own. Well, we'd like to take your fingerprints to eliminate you from the scene of the burglary. Uh, you said this wasn't a formal interview. It's just a chat at this stage. Yeah, yeah. Then permission denied. What do you know about this? It's ice. So you're on speed? No, I don't touch this stuff. So what was it doing in your living room table? I don't know. Don't bother telling us it belongs to someone else. Well, that's exactly what I am telling you. And who would that be? 